Good afternoon. Welcome once again to my daily chat. Uh, episode number 957, if you're keeping track. I am. <laughs> and today I'm going to talk about resolutions once again. Yes, I know it's been two weeks into January. We're already two weeks past the new year, but resolutions are still relevant. Um, and in particular, what the root entomology of a resolution is, because this might explain why they don't work. Because if you're like most people, and I said I think that statistic was something like 92% of all resolutions are broken within the first two weeks. And since today is the 14th of the month, that's two weeks. So 92% of your resolutions have probably gone to the wayside already. Maybe not you, but somebody close to you, you probably wouldn't be able to reach out and go, did you break some? And they're going to go, yes. So the odds are against you having resolutions that work, which is why I suggest a few alternatives and I've got a recommendation and also explain why this is a problem in the first place. I should be able to cover all those three. So let's start first of all with why resolutions don't work. Which is, it should, excuse me, why I believe the entomology of resolutions causes them not to work. So, um, and by the way, if you haven't seen my broadcasts or haven't watched my ones from around the new year, especially, I was very adamant about why re about resolutions not working because I believe that resolutions were this thing where you have to effort because resolution was resolving to do something, making it happen. That's one root of what resolution, that's from the French actually. I've been doing some research. <laughs> Unlike me, but I've done some research. So resolutions um, comes from the root. One one path is the root, which is resolve. Or re, uh, resolute. Re, resolute. I'm not going to get the translation, the original words right, but basically it means to resolve, to com, to get it, get it on and make it happen. However, sorry, uh, sorry. And so I spoke about using the power of intention, which is one of the four things I talk about. Intention being a thing that is not pushing, efforting, cr controlling. <clears throat> Excuse me, but is inviting another enrollment of spirit of the universe of support from other places. Why that's why the intentions are more powerful than resolutions. But I'm getting sidetracked. Let me get I just follow up my chair. But what I'm speaking about here is actually the other root etymology of resolution, which comes from the Latin. Yes, I've done some deep digging. Well actually I did a Google search, it wasn't that hard to do. <clears throat> because I saw an article talking about this. So I'm I'm speaking from what I read earlier today, which is inspired this talk. So the true origin before the French, sorry, the French people, <laughs> from the Latin of resolution, translates to loosening up, letting go, breaking down into simpler parts, like breaking apart, like, um, like unpacking, which doesn't sound like anything to do with getting your resolutions complete in the new year. Now, I, there is a certain play on it you could think about, maybe if you're looking at um, giving up something, because if you're loosening, letting go of, and breaking things down, maybe you want to quit smoking, Maybe a resolution will work for that, because the the actual under under um, underpinning of the word, the un, the underlying truth of the word, is tied to a form of letting go. For most people, the resolution is going to get fit, going to get healthy. Well, if you're letting go of getting something you want to get, it isn't going to work, is it? Obviously, it doesn't work. So the actual word itself has some flaws in it. <laughs> Simply put, the framing of the word re resolution. Especially coming from the, um, let me just read off the screen. I've got a computer screen to my to my right. It talks about how um, is the Latin is to, is breaking into parts from the, actually it's from the old French. The resolute, resolute, resolve. You know what? It's too much to read here. I, I, you got my point. I've already explained what I think is really the truth of this and where the real root of this expression comes from. I'm going a long way to make a point. And it may be kind of obvious that I'm doing that. If it's not, now it's obvious. I just told you. Because I've been very clear at the beginning of the month how if you did resolutions, they probably wouldn't last that long. So now I'm doing a two-week check-in. How are your resolutions going? Are they really working? Are you getting what you want? Are you getting results already? Are you staying true to your, your intention? Actually, not intention. Are you staying true to your resolution? Are you clear about what you're going to do? Now, if you watch my broadcast from January 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, those four days, I give four keys to actually manifesting a whole different reality the way you want it to rather than do resolutions in the new year. So if you've been doing those, I'm checking in with you now, I suspect you're going to be a lot better off than you were. So let me recap those four briefly for you. So I did talk about them um, 10 days, two weeks ago, and you can then apply them in your life. And I'll tell you about something I want to invite you to check out as well if you're really, really clear that resolutions are not working for you, which again, 92% of them fail. So the odds are pretty likely they're not working for you. So what I suggested, the four things I suggested, including what I said earlier, which is intention, is one of the things that you can use to actually set up your new year in a much clearer way. Now, it is the second week, it is the 14th of the month, 
<clears throat> smoothie. So it's okay if you wanted to start over. We're not too far into the year. You haven't like screwed up the whole year now. Because some people I know the feeling like if the resolution died on the third day, they're like, oh, my whole year's screwed up. It's like, no, you can actually regroup and restart. So this is my recommendation. If you don't have, if you didn't make any resolutions, didn't have any set up for the new year and you want to start now, that's fine. If you started resolutions and they already failed on you by now, you just don't start over. If you have resolutions going on now, but they're really hard to maintain, this will help you if you want to change over. So that's three options. There's probably more options you can have as well. So again, the four, and in brief, Cliff Notes version, the four things I recommend at the beginning of the year to suggest how to start your new year more effectively, more successfully, and more joyfully, is one, start with intentions. As I said at the beginning, or I said earlier, resolutions are about getting things done, resolving to make it happen, going to make things get things done. It's that energy of ego to make, get things changed, transformed, resolved, how you're going to do it. Intentions are invitational to a greater part of ourselves, which I like to call spirit, universe, source, whatever you want to call it, that will come to our aid. So when we set intentions in motion, we're going to get a lot more reinforcements. Like when you're trying to push a car, suddenly seven other people join you to help push it. That's the power of intention. So intentions one. So again, there's four things I'm going to mention. So I'm going to cover them briefly. So intention basically is aligning yourself to an inner, an inner truth, an inner goal, an inner guidance. So that's what intentions do. The second one I recommend is, which I'm working on right now for myself, is a vision board. Because a vision board is a visual reference of what you're looking to create. And it has more than one purpose. Vision boards are, I don't know if you, yeah, if you, okay, I can give you the notes. So vision boards are things you can create anytime, but especially when you're doing your intentions, because they put into a visual, a pictorial, um, medium, what you want to create, what your intention is. And it gives you a visual reference you can go back to. And all the things, I'm, the other three things I'm talking about, this one and the next two, are sensory inputs to remind you of what your intention is. So they're empowering and reinforcing of what you want to do. So again, intention first, try to what you want to create. And it could be, you could have a list of intentions for every area of your life if you wanted to, or one just like intentions, up to you. But if you do that, then you want to do a vision board. I would recommend do one for each of the intentions. So if you have one intention about your whole life, it's going to work out beautifully and it's going to go great, then create one vision board that references what that is. If you have an intention around your career, an intention around your relationship, or an intention around your health, an intention around et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, then recommend doing a vision board for each of those intentions because it ties visually to each one of those powerful declarations that create more impact. That's the second one. The third one I talked about is called embodiment. And I talked about this again, if you want to go into great detail, go back to the beginning of the year where I did all these four talks separately, four different days, so much deeper detail. Because I gave you, first of all, I gave you the do's and don'ts of vision board, so you definitely want to watch, that was uh, January 2nd. And if you want to reach out, you can message me, I'll send you the link for that. It's much more detail about why vision boards don't work and why they do work and how to make it so they do work for you. So key things about, intention, about vision boards. So that's number two. Third one is the power of embodiment. It sounds like, what does that mean? So let me explain it. <clears throat> Once you have written down your intention, by the way, intention should be written down, especially by hand, because when you do things by hand, it's another extra bonus, by the way, when you write things down by hand, it involves more of your physical body. Keyboard typing doesn't do it as much. So if you want to create intentions, yes, you can put them on your computer to put them in your screensavers, on your desktop, wherever to remind you, but writing them down by hand adds another visceral and another embodiment practice because it puts it into your body by using the muscles of your hand. I'm left-handed, so I'm using my left hand. So that's another thing to do. So embodiment is actually not just doing your hand, it's actually taking it on energetically. So as I said, vision, vision boards are a visual reminder, a visual um, anchor for what you're looking to create. So your embodiment practices, which are basically where you look at what you're creating and then in your imagination, take yourself there. Now you've probably done this in your daydreaming stakes, that's what it is really when you daydream about some vacation you want to go on or a certain relationship you want to have or a certain way your partner want, you want your partner to treat you. This is the same idea, but with much more intention. The intention plays in both places. So having clarity about what you want to have manifest and be real gives you the um, framework, structure for what you want to embody. And embodiment basically is what I would call a four-dimensional practice. Yes, four dimensions. Because what you're doing is you're not just simply seeing it in your imagination you're actually transporting yourself forward in time to when it actually manifests. So, for example, if you're saying you want to get a new job by the summer, or, no, let's do something else. Um, you want to have a vacation in the summer and you travel. So you think in July to August. So you, trans you transfer your, well, transfer, you don't transfer. You imagine yourself in July or August on that vacation. How does it feel to be there? 
how does it feel to travel and land and enjoy and explore and all the things you want to have on your, your trip? That's embodiment. You can write this down if you want, but it's more about how does it feel? Like put yourself in the physicality of it, how it feels so you have this sense of understanding. That's the third one. Fourth one, which is a simpler one, but very potent too, is affirmations. When you put together affirmations based on your intentions, which may have been inspired as well by your vision board and your embodiment, they have a place in your consciousness because they are auditory. You say them out loud or you write them on a, you write them down, put them on the mirror, and you say them to yourself in the mirror. So it's an auditory cue. So you've got feeling, kinesthetic, auditory, hearing, visual, eye, uh, your, your um, vision board, and then intention, which is spirit. So I'm giving you four different layers of this to make it really work. When you understand this, this gives you a much more potent, powerful, and clear way to take on your life. So if you're doing this alone, it's going to transform your life. I recommend you try that on for yourself. So replace your resolutions with this little package of four things. And as I mentioned in those four broadcasts, and again, if you want, you want the links to those, message me, I'll send you the links so you can get them. But I recommend you check out, not check out, long word. I recommend you join me, there's a better way of putting it, for my BFF Masterclass, because this is part of that. These four components will be used in different ways and different flavors through the three months of this journey together. It's a, it's a Masterclass, Mastermind, Group Program, um, immersive support structure, whatever you call it. It's got different names. I'm calling it a master class because that sounds pretty cool. But it's called BFF, which is Balance, Freedom, and Flow. And yes, you do discover yourself as being your best friend forever. That's the side effect of the program. Um, it's, it is intended to give you such self-support that you start to recognize how amazing you really are. That's the side effect. Yeah, not the primary focus, side effect. So recommend you check it out. That's barryselby.com forward slash BFF. I'll put the link in the comments. You can check it out for yourself. Um, at least, if nothing else, take these four um, keys with you and use them instead of resolutions and have a much more potent, powerful and pow and effective new year um, again, message me if you have any questions also message me if you want the links for those four broadcasts I'll give you those um, I think that's about it for the for the, this context if you haven't seen my broadcast before by the way and if you want to go check out my other broadcasts besides the one from the new year um, this is my daily Facebook live I do every day at 5pm Pacific time right here on my personal page on Facebook which is Barry Selby hi Welcome, join, welcome, thanks for joining me. I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, seven days a week, because there's always more to share and teach and inspire. That's why I've got 957 of these now. So there's a lot out there. Um, but also because I post other things on my personal page, I recommend you check out my business page where I have the archives of these stored, which is barryselby.author. Please like my page and you can find them on there. Although Facebook has been, how to say it nicely, Facebook doesn't show them all. 957, there's maybe 200 out there. So if you want to see the rest of them, I recommend you go to my YouTube channel because I do make sure I back them up. So if you go to my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby, you can watch the replays there. Please subscribe to my channel, by the way. There's a playlist on there called Messages for the Masculine where all of these broadcasts live. So you can check them out there, have a look, scan through them, find the ones you want by keyword search, looking at titles, browse, peruse, binge watch as you wish. <laughs> it's an option. And uh, you can get a lot of help from there. There's a lot of stuff about love and relationships, a lot about clarity of self-support, and a lot lately about how do you find the way back to yourself so you know who you really are. That's kind of where I'm going with my work and that's what BFF is about. So I recommend you check the link out in the comments if you have any sense and desire to become more empowered, more supported and more aligned to who you really are because it'll change your life. Um, and that is about it. I thank you for watching. I appreciate you being with me as always. If you have any questions about this, please message me. Check out the link as I mentioned. I invite you to join me in the course. It's going to be a blast. And if you have any questions about anything about love and relationships, you can reach out to me. Um, send me a message I'll give you some links you can click on to get some more help and uh, that's about it I thank you for watching I hope this has made some sense to you if you have any questions you know where to find me as I've said so many times message me <laughs> and uh, that's about it thank you I thank you again and as always as a reminder please take care of yourself I'll see you again tomorrow bye